That's one angry Jew. Then again, maybe he's playing hard to get. You know, the Shixes love that. What do I know about Shixes, huh? I'm a Jew. All I know is, oh my God, there's a woman I could never marry. But have sex with? That's another thing. What does that mean? What does that mean? Go out and sell your oats just as long as you marry a Jew. Like, I'm not going to fall for some one of these women? I mean, how, what kind of monster am I? I'm going to have sex, and we're going to go out, we're going to have dinner, we're going to, you know, see movies. And then one day I'm going to tell her, look, I got to marry a Jew. What kind of crazy paradox is this? Who can live with such pressure? But at least this guy, he's got the pants, the hat, he can't look at it, he's doing the right thing. Me, I'm a wreck. Like all American Jews, we can't handle this. So when we come back, we're going to deal with this. Or well, something else. because I've crunched the numbers on this, and it looks a little, God, I wish this was scripted. Uh. Hey, welcome back to Chutzpah. I'm your host, Scott Rubin, the guy that does this a lot, apparently. <laughs> yeah, a couple of fake guns. Watch out, anti-Semites. I'm not afraid to use them. Hey, look, we're here to discuss the phenomenon of the Shiksa. A Gentile woman, for all you Gentiles. I hate that word. It's derogatory, it's insulting, but it does explain the conundrum that us American Jews need to face. On one hand, we're taught to revel in the idea of the melting pot. That's what makes America great, right? Then we go to temple and our parents both tell us that we need to exult in our own culture and faith in whatever we do. We need to marry a Jew. How can these two both be true, and, and how can they coexist? It's a complete paradox. Someone needs to guide us through this, and that's me. We embrace the idea of e pluribus unum. You know, it's on our money. We empathize with various cultures and ethnicities. We believe we're all brothers, children of God. I was just listening to this song. Here comes a Baptist, here comes a Jew. There goes a Mormon and a Muslim too. I see you. Stand up, Hindu. I see it, Catholic, and I see you. We're all God's children. We're all God's children. And then on the other hand, we also have to deal with if you don't marry a friggin' Jew, don't come in the house. Paradoxes lead to insanity. Who lives with two truths like this? It must be the basis of all our neuroses as Jews. It's why Sigmund Freud probably created psychotherapy, you know, a Jew. I mean, to deal with this, who can deal with it? I'm so messed up. I mean, imagine if they just cut us free from this rule that we must marry Jewish. If some rabbis just said, you don't have to marry Jewish and your kids will still be Jewish. I mean, imagine like you go to a Gentile wedding and the girl catches the bouquet next to you and, and she turns, to me, and with that cute little turned up nose and that big smile, and we all know it. And I think, God, that could be my wife. Instead, I think, Jesus, that could be trouble. I mean, come on. But we survived 3,500 years. I'm going to be the one to break the chain. I mean, the Egyptians couldn't destroy us, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Philistines, the Persians, the Greeks. The Romans, the Spanish Inquisition, the Nazis, the Arabs, I mean, it never ends. But the most possibly heinous one of all, American assimilation. Yeah, I said it. Good luck lighting those Shabbat candles after watching nine straight seasons of Seventh Heaven or keeping kosher after accidentally getting sucked into a remarkable Pat Robertson, I found Jesus sermon. His rants are as persuasive sometimes as any Assyrian sword to your throat. And how am I supposed to make it through an entire Haggadah 
on Passover without skipping 30 pages and going right to the meal when I was raised on this. Watch, Davy. This is what happened the first Easter morning. What will we do without Jesus? We will never see him, never be with him again. The stone is rolled back. They've taken Jesus away. Why are you crying? They've taken Jesus from his tomb. He's gone. He's gone. He has been raised from the dead. You'll see him again. Be with him again. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, all right, we, that's where we stop, by the way. Why, Sigmund Freud, Freud probably. What do, what do you do when you flub, flub a line? What do you do? So now here in 2011, yeah, go ahead, intermarry. If we don't have Jewish children, how is this thing going to continue? You know, the Jewish people. We'll breed ourselves out of existence. And I'll be out of a job. I mean, isn't the fact that we bring Jewish children into this world the only thing keeping Jewish people going? I mean, if we don't marry each other and have Jewish offspring, how else does someone become a Jew? I mean, I don't think when people like are picking a faith, like Judaism, like really makes it on that list. How do we get more Jews, for God's sakes? It's not like we have booths stationed in Times Square and Hollywood Boulevard with stacks of holy scriptures and e-meter readings and four-armed jeweled gods to suck you in or serene Zen gardens or glorious spinal churches with welcome all signs. We have the opposite. You walk by a synagogue and there's two guys there harassing you to see if you paid your Yom Kippur tickets. Tickets! <laughs> Not that the others won't eventually take your money. We're just up front about it. You know, I, I'll tell you how we do it. This is how we get more Jews. Put, put like a Jewish deli in front of like a shul and then suck them in with the corned beef and rugula. They eat and then an angry deli waitress browbeats you into attending service in the back. Fellas! You're gonna need to put this on your head and go in the back for a little while if you want your cheesecake. What, you didn't read the sign out front? There, it's right on the menu. You must attend services before eating any of the baked goods. Who knows? Maybe we just need Jewish missionaries to replenish the stock. Hi. Have you ever thought of becoming a Jew? No. Okay. Have you ever thought of becoming a Jew? Have you ever thought about becoming a Jew? Uh, I'd be happy right now. <laughs> the Jews have had a pretty good run in this country, right? And we're only like a fraction of the population. I'm already a Catholic, so... Have you ever thought about becoming a Jew? A Jew? Uh, I, I don't know how the Christians do this. How do they do this, the Christians? They must just really love Jesus. It's so hard and embarrassing. Have you ever thought of becoming a Jew? What if I already am? Oh, that's great. Let's Really? <laughs> that's a good way to get rid of us. We need Jews. We need to big, create a bigger but pool. We don't believe in proselytizing. But I'm saying let's open the pool up. Don't you think? Yeah, but I don't, I don't think proselytizing is a good idea. All we're saying that's is just... That's set us apart, is that we don't proselytize. Yeah, and that's why we're so small, and I've got, like, you know, the poor guy, he's not married, he's got two women to choose from in the entire world. Well, he's young, why should he be married? How is he going to oh, find? Yes, yeah, What are you, 21? 27. You know, maybe we could tell them, hey, you know, being a Jew, it's a great way to, you know, be your own shop owner. Right, right. You know, like, get out of the... Oh, <laughs> I think we're a little intimidating. Hello. Have a nice day. Thanks. Shalom. I think there might be like a, like an age limit here, you know? Oh yeah, right, 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 okay. I think when you're past 80, you know, let them be. Right, 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 okay. Hi, have you ever thought of becoming a Jew? I am Jewish. Oh. <laughs> All right. Hello. Thanks, All right, I'm starting to believe that they're using that I'm Jewish thing for us to just go away. 
because look, I've been around long enough. I know what a Jew looks like, and she ain't no Jew. Okay. Good. Have you ever thought of becoming a Jew? Uh, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, are we in Israel? Is this where we are? Am, am I hallucinating right now? <laughs> Might as well. Be. Should we walk into the supermarket? Come on in. Let's see what happens. So, you ever thought of becoming a Jew? No. No? Oh. <laughs> where do the non-Jews hang out in the supermarket? You know, when you think about it, where do the they... The miracle whip on The ham. Oh, fantastic. Let's go to the... We're off to the main Azile. We happen to pick a, a market where there happens to be a lot of Jews for some reason, so we decided to... Go to the non-kosher food section. Non-kosher. We're going like where Wonder Bread is and the Miracle Whip, ham. ham. Anyone who's coming over here, not Jewish. Not Jewish. It's like the bait, you know, when you're fishing, you know, put some ham out, put some dairy out together with the ham, and then boom, you suck them in. Could you start filming, please? Yeah. Yes. All right. It's a little hard to uh, be a missionary inside because you don't last very long. Hello, gentlemen. Have you ever uh, thought about learning about the teachings of the Torah? No. Would you consider being a Jew? Will you take no, the... No, no, don't do that. Yet. No. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Have you heard of the teachings of the Torah? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, or would you be interested in learning more about believing in an invisible God? Mm, I don't know about that. No? Mm, I don't what, have my, my beliefs at all. What, so. what religion do you practice? I'm a Christian. Well, in Christianity, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Judaism, there's just the Father. It's a lot of responsibility to have to pray to three people. Is this like normal for Jews to be going around? I thought this was a Christian thing. Jesus was you Jewish, huh? Not wanting to be Jewish. Think about it. I mean, what was Jesus worshiping when he was giving the Sermon on the Mount? He was, he was a rabbi or, or a carpenter. What was it? I mean, he was a rabbi and a carpenter. That's an odd combination for a job. You got to admit. No, well, he had to be the Messiah if he was able to do both of those. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how could he. Uh, look, you should know that there's an invisible God that loves you. All right? I know you can't see him and you can't put him up on a wall and you can't see a picture of him. But you but just got to believe. He's all around. Trust us. You get a great education, great family, right? We're good with numbers and uh, very responsible people. Look, look, we have like literature here. We have like literature. Look, look, if you look at all the, look, we have Jews. Here, look, Did you, I mean, the Marx Brothers. Look, I mean, come on. I mean, you gotta love them, huh? I mean, everybody thinks they're funny. Jews, huh? 100 years? I mean, they haven't the even Marx rounded Brothers. us up yet. Uh, you know, everyone else in Hollywood. Jack Benny, Seinfeld, Larry David. I mean, it's a great club to be part of. And then those are the comedians. What about the musicians, right? Bob Dylan, Billy Joel. I think is he half? I don't know. Billy Joel. Uh, you got uh, who else? You got? I mean, you got a lot of people. You, you know, Rahm Emanuel. Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen. The Gershwin. I mean, this is a good yeah. club. Why wouldn't you even think of it? Come on. It's like a big responsibility. Being a Jew. All right. There's that little thing about the 613 commandments you got to follow. But once you get past that, it's it's easy. They really, street. the 613 commandments really lead to. A happier life anyway. Just think about it. Here, here take, take one of our calendars sure. and uh, you could call us and uh, we could advise you to like a rabbi that could convert you. Yeah. All right, just give it a thought. Give it a thought. We don't want to be pushy or anything. L'chaim and wh what else do we say? Shalom, 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 shalom. Jewish missionaries, probably not going to keep us Jews going as a people. So I guess we're stuck marrying each other, which is a tough haul. Look, I don't want to freak you guys out, but I've crunched the numbers. There are 7 billion people on Earth. 3.5 billion women, from those, 1.5 billion are eligible. Now, as a Jew, that number quickly drops. There are 15 million Jews, 7.5 million being Jewish women. Eligibility, 
Jewish women within five years of your age that are single, it drops to 300,000. Then the amount of Jewish women that you are attracted to that don't give you a headache after a simple exchange, then live within 500 miles of you, and then how many are attracted to you? That leaves two. Two eligible Jewish women for you if you're a Jewish man, and vice versa. Go find them. Good luck. Now, if you're a Gentile, hey, hey, hey you have 1.5 billion women. That's 750 million women to choose from. Jews, we've got two! Is this worth it? This is unbelievable pain. You better be Jewish and care about that Torah in order to go through this, or you're just needlessly torturing yourself. And I'm not talking about one of these Jews, you know, once a year at the Yom Kippur. If you're going to do this, you got to go to temple. You got to light Shabbat candles. Because why would you do this to yourself? Do you know how many hot babes are out there? <laughs> This is a true story. I mean, I think this says it all. At the day of my son's bar mitzvah, I'm freaking out before we start the ceremony because he's assigned the person to, like, to hold the Torah to my wife's biological dad, and he's not Jewish. Can you believe this? I'm freaking out because I'm thinking, oh my God, does this mean that, that if he touches the Torah, it, like the entire bar mitzvah will be invalidated? My wife was actually raised by her, her stepdad, who was Jewish, and my wife's, well, She's actually considered a bastard. Her mother's... <laughs> I, I will not be able to go home after this taping. That's what you want to say, huh, during a taping? My wife's a bastard. Now, we all know our wives are bastards, but how many people have an official paper that says your wife's a bastard? My wife's actually a bastard. Her mother's Jewish, the father's not. All right, you got it? All right, so now we're at the temple, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. The Gentile part of the family is going to be holding the Torah as my son's reading from it. I'm freaking the hell out! And I was concerned that if I didn't tell the rabbi that this could, like, invalidate the entire bar mitzvah, you know, having, like, a Gentile touching the Torah. I mean, what am I... Listen to me! I mean, just the other day, I'm watching Martin Luther King, and I'm thinking, oh, why can't we all get along? And now I'm thinking, oh, my God, a Gentile's going to touch the Torah! I mean, come on, this is the paradox. I really thought that if my, wa my wife's biological father touched the Torah, it would make it invalid because, because I remember as a kid that if the Torah fell and touched the ground, it was like some horrible bad omen and bad things would happen for 40 years and you'd have to repent for 40 years. And the rabbi looks at me and he says, calm down. Nothing's going to invalidate the bar mitzvah. It's good to get a little genetic mix in there. Have you seen what we look like? Half of us can't digest food, a third of us can't breathe. To tell you the truth, it's not bad to mix it all up. Huh? Now you're telling me this? There's been tens of Gentile women I could have gotten serious with over the years. All right, at least three. I mean, I was in college and I was a good Jewish boy. And now they're telling me this? Oh my God. Find out how we get through this. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm like improvising. Uh, all right, roll it back. Welcome back. I was just thinking, you know, maybe my rabbi's right. Maybe it is time to mix up the gene pool. And we're starting to look a little overbred, don't you think? All right, look, I propose if you're going to marry someone other than like another Jew, here's your best option. Don't freak out. Blacks. That's right, African Americans. If you have to go outside the faith, this is your best case scenario. 
Like, I mean, look how wonderful it all comes together. That rapper J Drake, right? Lenny Kravitz, I mean, come on. Ben Harper, Maya Rudolph, Rashida Jones, NBA point guard, Jordan Farmer, Sammy Davis Jr., Whoopi Goldberg, Sunda, and Nell Carter. And that's without any research. You can see it's a perfect melding of two peoples, the blacks and the Jews. Just look at the success of the level of the aforementioned celebrities. I never realized that aforementioned sounded like Afi Kohn until this very moment. Look, they reached the levels they have because blacks and Jews perfectly fill in each other's shortcomings. Their physical prowess, our business savvy, their flat round noses, and our large pointy hook noses. Well, in my case, the, I got the bubble Jewish nose. But they cancel each other out. Look, the, the, the noses, they're creating a perfect nose. It's all a wash. Our Ashkenazi white skin, their deep chocolate skin combines to make a wonderful mocha you. And I said mocha you. <laughs> the only thing that wouldn't work is probably the hair. Uh, you know, but there's things for that. You know, they got jerry curl and there's some gel that I haven't discovered yet, but we, <laughs> we can deal with that. Historically, we are the most oppressed, so why not the two groups join forces? Now that would be chutzpah.